Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Northampton Planning Board meeting of April 25th, 2024. Um, this we're in both uh, we're in a hybrid session both here at City Council Chambers and also online through Zoom. Um, traditionally, before we start our proceedings, there are three hearings before us, three applications before us tonight. Before we start those, we open up the podium to the public for any comment that's not related to the three agenda items. And then we'll also take written comments from uh, people on Zoom. So um, again, the agenda items have to do with a continuation of 39 Day Avenue, a site plan review at 963 Ryan Road, and a site plan review at 60 Maple Street in Florence. So is there anyone who would like to address the planning board about other items? And if you'd remember to give us your name and address, that would be great. Claudia Lefko, 40 Valley Street. Great that you're meeting here in these chambers so that everyone seems to be able to hear and good audio. And I know that's been an issue. So I sent an email earlier in the day with some photographs of one of the women street, um, which I hope will become the poster child for very bad infill development. Whatever we were sold in terms of the development, possibility you know, what the development would look like. It looks nothing like that, as you can see. There's no room on the property for any plantings. It's concrete behind, you know, or tar, a small tar driveway, a parking lot in the back, and maybe 10 feet of planting between the house, the, the building, the development, and the abutters. And speaking of the abutter, David Farrell is the abutter on the on one side of the street. And he asked me to tell you that he's very upset about the three poles that have had to go in, I think electric poles um, around the development because they came and they put the poles in and there are huge mounds of dirt remaining that nobody has taken away. He himself, he's in his 70s, he's been shoveling dirt away to deal with it. His sidewalk has also been damaged and he something in his yard. And all of these things are as a result of the the construction at 107. I'm here because I really feel like somehow the planning board should be informed of what the outcome of this development is. It's in a very dangerous intersection on William Street. The street is too small, the sidewalk is too small, and there's a lot of traffic. We are in a heavily walked area. People coming from Pleasant Street come down Montview, they go over the dike. So there's a lot of foot traffic. And now we're going to have extra car traffic. And if you look at the photograph of how narrow this driveway is and how close the building is to the to the sidewalk, I think we're looking at a disaster. And I'm not sure who to appeal to. I mean, this is a DPW issue. This is a planning board issue in my mind. We need a very serious uh, look at the sidewalk and the and the road situation. It it should be a priority because essentially we've created this even extra problem for us. William Street was already a traffic problem. Now we're going to have even a bigger problem. And I just don't know how to tell you the impact this has had. People in the neighborhood, myself to some extent included, are suffering stress related physical problems as a result of this. People have been tripping over equipment. We've been dealing with overparked cars and trucks there. And the city has, you know, sort of foisted this on us in a way that has that has created, let me say, a bad feeling in the neighborhood. And now we're going to be asked, some people, longtime residents, born and raised, Mr. Farrell's family has owned this, lived in this house for five generations. Now the city is going to be in a situation where without investing proper money, I would say, in the neighborhoods, in our neighborhood or whatever, foisting this on us, we're going to be faced with the upcoming override. And who's going to be asked to save, quote unquote, save the schools? You know, it's going to be the people in the city who pay the taxes. And I'm 
I am a former school committee person. I'm somebody who believes in public education. I want to support the override, but I'll tell you the city's budget is being mismanaged. And I feel like part of the example of this has to do with the lack of money going into the neighborhoods and the attention we're getting. So I'm making this a sort of very broad statement and I'm going to bring it to an end, but I'm begging you, the neighbors are are willing to work with the city. We're going to get $7,000, I think, in traffic calming money. We want to be part of how that is spent. And we'd also like to be part of the conversation about what is going to happen with that sidewalk there and that intersection. How can we actually ensure that we're going to be living safely when residents move into that building? Thanks very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and it, it may sound excuse me, harsh, but we don't respond to comments I, as they come in. So, I, so is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment uh, about an item that's not on the agenda, please? Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Benjamin Spencer. I was I live on Rust Avenue. I was here two weeks ago at the last planning board meeting. Um, and there was just a couple of things that came up during that meeting after public comment had closed that I thought would be maybe beneficial to come back and speak to. So um, one of them, there's three. I'll try to be brief. The first one um, question came up for when the last time a citizen's petition hadn't been um, brought forward before the planning board. And um, the petition that I had used as a template for the petition that I created was one that was filed in the end of 2019 and approved in early 2020. It was a petition to change zoning on Wright Avenue. Um, it's the property that's directly behind Netta. It had been, there had been a house there. I'm not sure what happened there, but then um, the petition allowed for, um, well, there had been a residence now there is employee parking for um, NETA. And so that was a petition that apparently required a lower bar. Um, so one thing that happened when I uh, created my petition is um, I had copied the format without addresses on the petition because that's what I saw online. That got rejected by the city solicitor. Um, so I had to go out again and collect signatures for the petition. So all that to say, it was more recent history when a citizen's petition was in front of this board, including members on this board who voted on that. That was number one. Number two, um, at the last meeting, one of the members of the planning board mentioned um, somewhat in passing that they didn't even know what they were voting on. And that I found problematic because, um, you know, two days prior to the meeting and weeks before as well, but two days prior to that very meeting, the agenda was posted. And on that agenda is, uh, is the items. And one of those items was the petition. And there's a live link on that, on that um, agenda on the city's website. It might have been in two places even because of both planning board and legislative matters. The link that brought you to the petition. Um, so I'm not quite sure what to make of that, except that there was a member of the planning board who um, clearly had um, had their phone and had access to the internet during that meeting and where other members actually actively tried to do some research into the matter at hand. I didn't see that happening um, by one particular member who flat out said they had no idea what they were voting on. So I found that very interesting. Um, the last thing I would say is that, um, you know, democratic process came up and I can't imagine a more appropriate way for the citizens of Northampton to engage with this body and the city council than to follow what's in state law. And that's exactly what happened. And, um, and I would say that the democratic process is happening right here in this room and it's happening on Zoom. And I think that the planning board, I'd like to respectfully ask that the planning board um, have the same access as the city council meetings where public comment is done through Zoom because I find um, the chat being read by a member of staff 
to sort of be infantilizing, I guess was the best word that I could come up with for the public to participate. And I think that that's unfortunate and takes away from the voice of uh, the citizens of Montana. Thank you. Thank you. So anyone else in city council chambers like to make a comment? All right. Carolyn, is there anyone? Uh, there is one hand? chat for public comment. Um, okay. Um, Jacqueline McCreener, I support um, my Montview neighbors and their concern. Sorry. Uh, Jacqueline McCreener, I support my Montview neighbors and their concern about the open space requirement for 107 William Street and the issues being foisted on the abutters due to the construction processes. Thank you. All right. Hearing no other comments from the public, we'll move into our first item on the agenda which was posted for seven o'clock, a continuation at 39 Day Avenue. This was from March 28th. Um, and so is the applicant here to give us a little continuation? Yeah, let's see here. Oh, see, an extension, um, you need to use that. Today. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. Maybe this will work. Hmm. Well, I don't know why that happened, but let's see what happens. Worst comes to worst, I can close it and open the PDF I made. So, from the beginning, I'm not making you look at everything about my company again from last time, but it, just for everybody. the record, you are. How do I get this up? Or is everybody else looking at this already? No, you no not yet. Share screen. Oh, that computer's on Zoom, so you just do share screen. Okay. Um... Oh, I say share. Host. Did that work? Yeah, you close. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to close it and see if it ruins it. Oop. <laughs> okay. I'm not really sure how to get rid of the rest of that stuff, but I think you can see it. So, hi, my name, as again, from the last time, is Danny McCann with Pioneer Development. Um, this is was just the same intro slide. So, you know, as I said, we're a small developer focused on, you know, incremental value-added retrofits and smart growth locations, and we're mission-driven. So, uh, so we got a lot of feedback at the last, at the hearing, and so what we've been up to, we've done a lot of work since then. Um, we've been really actively consulting with the fire department. Um, we've been kind of back and forth with them about what the best solution for fire truck access is going to be at this development. Um, all the way up until 5.30 today, we had been really talking about Glenwood being the best access point, and then the fire department gave me a call and and basically we're we're saying you know actually it is going to be better from day avenue for various reasons um so what we need to demonstrate to them is that we can turn a fire truck into uh the driveway from day avenue so we'll have to give them a diagram and i think we're just going to ground truth it too we'll take we'll ask them to take the small fire truck out and because it's an existing driveway and if we need to make a modification like a mountable curb or something like that we can um but i think that that would be a a simple way to get to the final and then just have secondary fire egress from the Glenwood Ab side. Um, I have been speaking with DPW about if we decide to go with some kind of alternate addressing plan for fire access or potentially for just um, 
you know, delivery trucks, just try to simplify delivery trucks coming to the correct entrance here. And um, DPW basically is able to approve and, and give me, give us whatever we need, depending on what the fire department says and what is the best solution for addressing. So we could get the new construction units, some or all of them to have a Glenwood Avenue address, um, or we could keep them all day Avenue. So I think that that's something that I thought was pretty cooked up until five o'clock today. And now I think I would just leave it open and say, we need to just get a, a final approval from the plant, from the, um, the fire department, um, you know, based on that turn in from Day Avenue, and then um, make sure that whatever we think is best, the fire department also agrees, works for them. And then at that point, I would submit the final application for any re-addressing for the, um, for the, um, for the development. So um, they basically said, though, that they would approve the, so that, in summary, they'll approve the proposal subject to adequate fire truck access from day Ave. So we got to show that, that turn in and that we minimize obstructions, um, which we've done and maintain 35 degree clear turning radiuses, which have been added to the plans now. Um, and we can consider a mountable curb if it becomes necessary. We met with the tree warden um, on April 11th. He recommended that we consider removing the tree that was the subject of so much discussion at the end of Glenwood Avenue um, for various reasons. He didn't think it was a particularly high value tree. He thought that it was gonna potentially be affected by our, our design anyways. Um, and so he felt like if we replaced it with a couple of nice trees there, which we, pr we proposed two dogwoods, um, and I guess the city's trying to avoid maples so um or something else on the tree list but the dog would seem like it, it would work um he also recommended so we talked with him a bit about i'm sure you saw in the plans but john will talk about it a little bit more um where we ended up with the retaining wall we have specked out found a new retaining wall that we don't need to dig down for so it won't affect tree roots as much um that is a landscape you pl planted retaining wall instead of a stone one. Um, so one of the advantages of this retaining wall product that we're looking at is that um, is that we don't have to dig, you know, um, but that doesn't mean it's not going to have potentially some impacts on trees that are near it. So he uh, recommended that we bring our arborist back to the site. He did agree with, you know, the original uh, report that we submitted from the arborist concerning the tree behind the garage. So he was fine with that. Um, and then he said, bring your arborist back to the site and get rec more detailed recommendations on how to best protect these trees that are near the retaining wall. There's two of them. And um, also the tree up at the front of the, um, on the neighbor's property up by the front of, of the property um, where we're going to have, where we propose some fencing. Um, we did notice while we were there that there's some rot at the base of uh, the larger of the two trees. So, you know, but we said to him and then we said to the arborist, regardless, let's do what we can to keep this tree alive as long as possible. There's lots of trees with rot in the city. Um, so we met with the arborists. He's going to provide us a full report, which he said he'd get to me by Monday. But by email, he basically just said that special care should be taken to cut any exposed roots cleanly um, with sharp pruning tools, that we should trim up the canopies um, and uh, in order for there to be clearance, that kind of thing, um, and that we should treat the trees before, during, and after construction uh, to encourage root development. So he's gonna have some specific recommendations and a proposal for that um, and um, that we should be providing, or they will potentially provide, they're going to give us a proposal, some supplemental irrigation during and after construction to compensate for any, any potential root loss. So most of that was more applying to the ones at the back. Uh, the front one, we're not putting, there's no retain, retaining wall by the by the front tree and he wasn't so concerned with the the post holes for any fencing um so much as the driveway being close and so you know he just said you'll have to kind of take these measures to be careful <clears throat> we were asked to adjust the plan to show five foot sidewalks where applicable um and accessory structures that meet setback requirements um so we did do that um we did end up eliminating the storage sheds for the units um we added the five foot sidewalks in 
consider eliminating, we were asked to consider eliminating um, our concept for single family enhanced open space around the cottages in favor of a true duplex um, in order to gain more separation from the dry aisle and more snow storage. We were asked to consider removing um, an extra part, the extra parking space to allow for more, more snow storage and more space to protect the tree at the end of Glenwood, which is now going to be removed. Um, and then there was like a whole bunch of miscellaneous comments, some of which were conflicting, but that does happen. And, um, you know, we uh, kind of were asked to look at, you know, parking, snow storage, our open space calculation, delivery trucks, a variety of things. So we really did spend a lot of time thinking about and going around and around over the feedback that we received um, at that meeting. Um, and so I just I just wanted to show you all the various iterations, which, you know, what's in them isn't maybe necessary that necessarily that important. But like when after a huge process at the end, you get something that looks a little bit like what you originally submitted. Like, I don't want you to think that like and we will explain the changes that we made. But like we really considered some radical changes as a result of the of the input that we got. And, you know, even though we came back around to a lot of our original solutions for various reasons, you know, we really made the effort to really rethink a lot of potential things. And we have pretty good reasons for why we stuck with or made very small alterations to what we did. So I just I want you to know that, that the process did work. We spent a lot of time thinking about whether we had come up with the best possible things with all the constraints. We've been around and around with the fire department and Deep W and various people to try to make sure that we're really like solving all the problems now and that we won't have any later. Um, so some quick things. We looked at the snow storage and it exceeds what we provided for Hamden, 36 Hamden, our last um, project. So we don't believe we need to make any like radical changes to this to get more snow storage, especially if it cuts into the open space, as I define open space, usable open space by tenants. If, it, if the result is it's, it's cutting into usable open space by tenants just to get more snow storage when we already have adequate snow storage, I, we just really didn't feel like it was worth worth the trade off there. Um, so. So, but we did look at snow storage and, and it is adequate. Um, we did work quite a bit uh, on refining our open space um, calculation. And, you know, as I mentioned at the last meeting, you know, I think that maybe the city's open space definition could use some updating. Um, I actually emailed to the planning department, the city of Boulder's open space definitions and their zoning, which allow for textured concrete and patios and decorative elements and don't count them against open space and furniture and nice things for people to have don't all count against open space. Um, but regardless, we have, we have something today that we're working with. Um, and so um, what I would like to do uh, based on the regulations today is I would like to go with the solution that we talked about at the last meeting where we just do an as built and you know whatever's left that's how much I'm going to build to in patios so if I so we're going to try to get nice nice size patios for these units um, so we'll just you know we'll build everything except for the patios and then we'll see how much open space we have left and then the remainder is going to be patios so that all of these units can get great outdoor spaces at the backs and sides of their houses. Um, like I said, the, Glen, the Glenwood addressing plan. So we've been kind of back and forth on the best way to address this. And I know that addressing isn't necessarily within the purview of site plan review, or maybe isn't kind of a gray zone. Um, but um, if we elect it, I guess the one big advantage is that it would simplify, it would bring delivery trucks for set the seven new units to the correct side of the one-way drive. That was something that was mentioned at the last meeting. Um, so I think it is worth considering um, for the street addressing, maybe the fire department, if they wanna go in the Day Avenue side, ultimately uh, has a different note in their system. So I gotta kind of work that out with the fire department. Um, but um, but yeah, that's kind of, kind of where we're at at the moment. Um, we also assessed parallel parking. There were some concerns about the parallel parking, whether there was really enough space, even though that is the regulation of the city that we met. So I don't know, we just kind of walked around and we saw some city spaces and I don't know, they were eight and a half by 11. That's a full size truck um, in an eight and a half by, sorry, by 18 parallel space. There's three of them right in front of the parking garage. I don't know, it seems like people are getting in and out of spaces of these sizes, so. 
And I think for, I'm, I'm going to hand it off to John from here um, and let him just kind of speak to whatever he sees in the, the plans and the drawings for the next couple pages on things that relate to the engineering on the site. And um, then you'll hear from some updates from Jeff, um, my architect, and then we'll take questions. How do you advance this? I've just been hitting this uh, arrow key here. Okay. And back. Well, when I screw up, you can come and give it. Okay. Uh, my name's John Wallen. Um, I'm the engineer on the project. Uh, this photograph is a, is a uh, picture of a large, very large retaining system. Um, ours is going to be two tiers high. Uh, and where this will go is in the area that goes in front of the trees. Uh, that's close to the tree roots. So this allows us to put the retaining. It's basically st soil stabilization. It's not, it's, it's called a wall, but it doesn't look like a wall. Uh, so it's completely planted. Um, and we also, in the plan, we pulled that wall back another foot away from the trees. So we've got it back about as far as we can. Uh, and then we're going to use this this system uh, beyond the parking area. So under the parking area, we'll have the rigid wall where we have to dig down, but there's no trees in that area. And then uh, beyond that area around the lot, we'll we'll use this where we need to. Yeah, I can point here. Is that visible? Yeah. So the rigid wall will go down through here. And then we'll start with this this uh, earth wall. We'll we'll jog back and then go down through here. We did move. Keep losing this. We did move this entrance over to the left. Uh, away we had this lined up before, so we're a couple of feet in, uh, which helps getting in and out of there. Uh, and we also moved the transformer from, it used to be here in front of, uh, in this little uh, cutout, and we just moved it in behind the fence. Then we can get away from the bollards and all the stuff that has to be protecting it for traffic. The stormwater system, in talking with Doug uh, and listening to the issues about the back street flooding um we decided to increase the size of this system 50 percent beyond what was required by the regulations and keep in mind we were already beyond that because we were mitigating a hundred year storm which you normally wouldn't do so we're mitigating all the storms and we increase the size of this system 50 percent so that it will now completely contain a two-year storm, which the systems normally don't completely contain them. We did an analysis as if the as if the outlet was blocked. And so this system is now big enough to contain a, a storm of 50% uh, probability. And I think that's about it. Good evening. I'm Jeff Penn. I'm the architect on the project. Um, one of the comments that we had um, received, excuse me, was about the appearance of the blank walls. And we had originally thought that we were reluctant because the buildings are relatively close together to have windows on both sides. But we paid close attention to that comment. And what we what we discovered was we were able to find locations where we can have windows that won't be opposite op other windows. And it completely increase and enliven the spaces. They're very open front and rear, but now they're actually going to be articulated on the sides as well. Um, we think that that comment actually brought us to a finer design. These are going to be much brighter, nicer uh, units. Um, I, I don't believe we've made very many other changes. Um, I don't think we've made very many other changes than that, but that was really, yeah, yeah, that was really the, uh, that's really the major change architecturally from the last presentation. Um, but as I say, we've, uh, we will, um, especially on the, that, the lower right hand uh, view is the win is the unit that would be 
at the end of the individual units where people would be driving by. And we agreed that especially that one um, really should look nicer. <laughs> but it uh, alerted us to a way to make them all uh, appear nicer and be better living environment. Did I understand correctly that you're bringing some of the units in together, though? The, nothing has been changed in the original layout. Um, Okay. But we, uh, but because the units are close together, we were worried about having, you know, at 10 or even at the six feet apart, we wouldn't want to have windows directly opposite one another. But we were able to find a way to not do that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I understood that you had brought some of the units together in order to increase more of the driveway space. No, I misheard that. We considered then. it. We, we looked at it. We decided to keep them as they're laid out. I see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Wait, go on for it. Oh, and just keep advancing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, the prior slide would have been the um, smaller units, excuse me, the co so called cottages, and the prior one was the townhouses. Um, and in this plan, uh, you see how it has just, uh, we've altered the articulation just, just a little bit. Any more? There you go. Question. Yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. So before we uh, start any public comment or questions from the board, I just want to note that I wasn't the uh, George Koha wasn't present at the first meeting. Um, I've toured the site three times, once with the group and once and twice by myself. Um, I have reviewed the minutes and I've reviewed the YouTube video of the recording from the Zoom. So I feel um, balanced enough to and join in these discussions tonight. Um, and I hope that's okay with the applicant. Um, having said that, I'll open up the, the floor to the board for any questions, clarifying questions for the applicant and their team before we move on to the public comment. I think the last time the the issue about oh, sorry, Carolyn, your mic. The issue the last time about the um the board had asked for the applicant to review or to look at the option of um putting the units together to gain more space for snow storage, and the applicant had indicated that she thought there was enough snow storage. I think the issue really was relative to where the new trees were being planted and where that snow storage was. It's that they were sort of using the same space so trees being planted and then also that area was defined as snow storage so um the i think it might make sense for the board to look at that um to make sure there aren't conflicts there um i just want to be clear on the open space which is one of the big issues with this that um i think you said you were just going to leave the patios off for now um uh, is that the, like the patios are the nine ten by nine patios the patios are on the plan so yeah. we're planning to build the patios yeah what, we, what we're going to do is build them last okay so we'll see how much space right, you exactly. have make sure that we don't it, that there's because it's tight make sure that there's no chance of exceeding okay the regulation okay but nothing else was changed related to the open space okay. um oh we, we remove right there we did remove the rain barrels because they counted against the open space, and we okay. decided that uh, the patios were more important. Okay. Sorry. But maybe if the regulation changes, we could bring them back in. It's really a small thing to get nice things back in later if we're allowed. Okay. On the planting plan, there's a tree type A, kind of like where the transformer used to be. There's a tree type A, two of them. Backwards. Okay, right, but they're they seem to be off the property. They seem to be in the street. They're, How does that work? Facing a tree, that tree that is proposed to be removed is part on our property and part on the on the city street property. So we had placed it as a street tree replacement. That's what the tree board asked us to do. But it's like literally in the street. In the asphalt? I think it's the right of way, not the paved way, is probably where they would where 
um, rich. That it sounds it, yeah, more sense, but that's not right of way. <clears throat> but it is actually just so like this isn't of, the actual paved. That's not the actual paved exactly. So it's in a bit of green I mean, space. It has a border that says approximate edge of paving on it. I mean, it seems. I don't know. So there's more. There's something on that edge. And... So on that edge, it is accurate. That's been you know tested because we were trying to make sure that the neighbor could continue to park uh, a car in front of their house and we'd get into the driveway. Um, but on the left side, we didn't we didn't refine the right of way to reflect the edge of pavement. So it's placed where there is sort of like I don't want to call it grass because it seems like everybody in the neighborhood might just be pushing their leaves onto it, but it's something for sure. Something is not something. Safe. Okay. Something's not. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a it's a pile of leaves that has exactly what it is. Okay. But it's not it's it's in the right of way though. It's not on it your property. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Other questions? Well, why don't we open it up at this point for public comment? Um, we didn't close the public comment at the end of the last meeting before we continued. So we're reopening public comment for anyone who would like to approach the podium here in city council chambers. Then we'll move over to the hybrid crowd. Hi, I'm Aaron Irvin. I live at 20 Glenwood Avenue. Um, I appreciate the um, work that you put into uh, responding to some of our comments. I appreciate the comment that actually some of our comments made your design better. Um, and I have a couple of specific things and then I'm gonna do a little tiny bit of grandstanding and then I'll get out of your way. Um, snow storage, the snow currently from Glenwood Avenue is stored where that tree in discussion is about to re be removed. And there is no clarity to me about where we're going to put Glenwood Avenue snow when this is now a drive through unless it's just going to get pushed through into the development. But it does seem like a question. Um, so I'm, I'm worried about snow storage for Glenwood Avenue still. Um, and I left my notes behind, so that's why I'm a little bit hesitant here. Um, I appreciate that the uh, engineer has um, stated that the water retention already above required has now been made even greater than that. Um, I suspect that it's not just because they're doing the right thing, but because, in fact, we are facing a climate crisis um, and we have a water crisis. And we know that the way to address water and flooding and like that is not lot by lot. Um, it's not one property at a time. This is a catch basin. You all know it. Um, it was a swamp 100 years ago. And... If we were addressing a, it as a swamp now, we would not do now what was done 100 years ago. Um, and so I continue to think that I'm, I'm glad that that's being noted. Um, but I think that addressing the water on a lot by lot basis is bad planning and a bad prod, prod, uh, product for the future. Um, and I spoke just directly a minute ago to um, the noting that, oh, geez, the neighbors actually made some comments that were useful and helped make the design better. I would like to believe that even though it is not currently the law, that we live in a community where it would be possible and maybe even preferable and perhaps desired to have a conversation with the abutters and the neighborhood before you even start so that you can make a design that works for the whole community because there are some things that could be better and that could work better for all of us um, that are not required by law but are achievable and that's what i got thank you thank you
also um i'm kind of the uh, de facto spokesperson for our abutters and neighbors group and i have about a 12 minute presentation i would like to try and do the whole thing without interruption but if you would like me to stop after a while and have someone else come up and say something that would be okay uh, it would be more logical i think to be able to just do the whole presentation and as you know from last time it's not ranting and raving it's all code based Everybody okay with that? Is it, is it the same one we saw? No, no, no. All different. Virtually all different. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> I'm going to miss my funny little point here. <laughs> Um, can somebody tell me how to move the area at the top so that I can get to Shirley? Ah, there. Great. I just want to get to slideshow from, from the beginning. Okay. And I can just... Okay. As I contemplate the development next door to me and the possible sale, sale of the uh, uh, house on the other side of me, I can't help but think about up. We do want to thank the developer and the engineer and architect for a number of things. We've talked about some of these already, adding windows to the left, making changes in the HydroCAT analysis so that it's more precise and more accurate, moving the transformer so that it's no longer within three feet of the car, removing the sheds, and increasing the width of the sidewalk. We appreciate the fact that you and they listened to the comments that we had made and, and made some changes, but we do have some additional issues. First of all, screening for the parking area. Um, you know what the, the requirements are here. For over five cars, there has to be screening. The developer has reduced the height of the fence uh, at the uh, first 35 feet of the driveway to four feet and then to five and a half feet for the rest of the parking area. It had been six feet in the original. You can see this is the original plan at six feet. It's now four feet and then five and a half feet. Unfortunately, cars aren't that short. If you look at the average car heights, um, only sports cars are less than four feet. So one could ask, does this effectively screen that parking area from my view, since I'm the abutter that is on that side of the property? I think to screen effectively screen the vehicles, the fence needs to be at least six and a half feet tall. If you remember, pickup trucks go to six foot two. And it appears that the fencing will sit atop the retaining wall. So we're going to have to look at the retaining wall. I would much prefer that the fence be between the property line and the retaining wall so that we don't need to look at the retaining wall, if at all possible. That's that. It's that's going to be the block retaining wall, the, the solid one. Uh, we'd like to you know, put that out as a possibility. Uh, they've already talked about the 40% um, open space requirement. They only have 32 uh, feet of wiggle room at this point. There are some items that aren't included, we think. Um, landings by the small units, trash recycle. There's a new trash recycle area, which add, which would add another imperme impermeable area. The transformer pad before was on uh, asphalt. Now it's on grass, so that would add some area. Uh, the rain barrels are gone in the, in the site plan. Unfortunately, they're not gone in the stormwater review. So we think that probably ought to be changed in the stormwater review. And the bike racks are also somewhat confusing. They're not included this time. They were last time. If you look at um, the site plan and the detail page, it shows asphalt under the bike racks. Now, if they've changed that, that's fine, but they ought to change it and the site plan as well so that it's clear to everybody looking at it what they're doing. I love the idea that they're going to you know, build everything except the patios and then decide whether or not they can even fit patios in or if they're going to be 
two by three because there's not much other open space. I think it would behoove them to really check out some of these other areas to see if they should be included in impermeable and make some adjustments prior to that based on that. Um, I, I'm not going to say any more about open space. I think everybody understands where we are with it. Stormwater, there are uh, several um, parts of 30-11 that deal with stormwater. You're familiar with all of them, I'm sure. There are some issues, we think, with the stormwater report. Uh, Aaron and I met with Chris Baker last week and went over the stormwater report in some detail, and he agreed with us on a whole series of, of issues. Um, I, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this because it really is getting into the weeds. But I will say uh, there are a couple of things that I think are important to understand. Um, the pre-construction analysis had all of the runoff flowing into the city drain that's in the yard at 28 Sherman. So it was all flowing from the front of the property to the back. OK, to that drain that's not really in the yard, as it says here, but in the neighbor's yard. Um, there is, we would argue that there is some runoff that also runs onto Day Avenue. Um, if you look at, there's a 101 foot um, elevation. It's hard to believe that water from there is going to flow through the house <laughs> and to that back drain. That fl I, I can see the water flow down the driveway. So we're just suggesting that they should do some additional revisions in their calculation in their calculations. Oh, okay. Um, Clarify. What is the essence of that line? Just so I understand what's the point here to make there. Okay, two points. One is for a later point that I'm going to make, you need to understand that right now water is flowing back towards in the back of the property. Okay. The second point that I'm making is that we think that the um that the plans, the both pre-construction and post-construction mm -hmm. analyses should be very accurate and precise. And they're not at this point, we think. Uh, they're not including, uh, they're underestimating the amount of uh, water that flows from um, the front of the house into the drain. And so their calculation of peak flow, current peak flow, may be inaccurate. We think it ought to be very accurate because there is so much of an issue with flooding, basement flooding and street flooding. So we're just asking them to check over this and to make it more accurate so that we know what the peak flow is now, so we know what peak flow they have to match with their system. Okay. And what's going to happen in the post-construction is the water, all of that water that had been draining off into the back is now going to drain to Day Avenue. Okay. And that that's correct, right, John? It goes into a basin in Day Avenue, which ends up going right past the back drain. It's all connected. Right. Wait a minute. It, does, it doesn't. It goes into the uh, drain in the in the front. But... Um, we'll hold on. Excuse me. Right. We'll, I'm sorry. We we'll address the board with. I'm sorry. His response in here. That. Um. So the, and I've asked John if we could actually talk about this at some point because we would just like clarity. Um. In order to just be certain that peak flow is not going to be any higher than it is now. Um, uh, so we're also concerned about the accuracy of the analysis in terms of the percentage of impervious areas with, that are inconsistent with the percentages used in the site plan. Again, we'd like this to be as accurate as possible, and we think that at the moment it lacks some of that. If you notice, um, this is the... Previous, uh, previous area that they're using right now, 41.12%. But that is what was in their previous calculation before they made changes. If you look at the amount of uh, previous area in their site plan right now, you can't see it on here. It's 40.17%. Uh, so there are discrepancies between the two. We think those discrepancies need to be resolved so that we can have the most accurate calculation of peak flow. You're tired of hearing me say that. I'll move on. I guess what Day Avenue currently floods during rainstorms. The runoff is going to flow that used to flow in the back will now flow into the front area and then go through the pipe that runs through my property. It's going to increase substantially increase, we think, the frequency and depth of the flooding. 
it's probably important to note that one portion of that cross-country uh, stormwater pipe that runs through my property collapsed in 2011. I was mowing my lawn and went down to, in a sinkhole up like up to, up to my knees. The city did repair it. At least one area on the property line is now depressed about four inches, and it gets it more depressed every year. Potentially, that's exactly what it looked like prior to when it collapsed in 2011. So what we're thinking is the increased flow of water from Dayab is going to further stress that 115-year-old pipe and increase the probability of another collapse, which the city would need to repair and would cost it a substantial amount of money. Quick, this is our last area. Uh, they've already addressed the question of the evergreen tree on page one. Thank you very much. That's uh, a tree on my property, and I'd really like it to be protected. I want to have assurance of that. There's also a 20-inch maple that is actually right on the property line. Uh, if you look at the earlier version of the site, uh, they've taken it off. I don't know why they took it off the current version of the site plan, but the earlier versions show that tree. It is exactly on the property line. MA law requires that both parties consent to the removal of a tree on the property line. I've never been asked for my consent, and I'm... There we go. Okay. I am not giving them my consent to remove that tree. To give you a sense of where that tree stands, it is basically, um, when you look at the drip line, it extends into two parking spaces. So I, I don't want that tree removed. It's going to force some changes in their plans. Uh, similarly, there's a shrub row on the property line in the front. Same kind of thing. They said that they want to um, trim the property for the fence. We would argue that such drastic trimming would severely damage the shrubs, possibly kill them. And I won't consent to the removal of those either since they're right on the property line. Finally, for prevention, we're aware of at least one instance when the contractors working for the developer placed a large piece of equipment on a butter's property without asking permission. That was a crane. To prevent that from happening in this instance, I posted no trespassing signs on my property line today. I mailed via certified mail a no trespassing notice to the developer, covering the developer, their agents, their contractors, contractors' employees, and contractors' equipment. And I will submit a copy to the police department. So what we're asking we urge the board to continue the hearing since my restrictions on tree and shrub removal and access to my property will probably necessitate changes in that plan. A continuation would allow the developer and engineer to meet with the butters and their neighbors to discuss changes in the plans that would benefit everyone. If those discussions were successful, I would likely remove some or all of those restrictions. And I would define a successful discussion as one in which no one gets everything they want, but everyone gets most of what they want. So that is where we, we stand today. And I'm... Sorry, to be clear, like what you're asking for was in this PowerPoint? That was what you're... You're not asking for things that aren't in that list? Is that the list of things you're asking for for this deal? No, we, we're asking to be able to have a conversation with them to look at possible changes in the plans that we think would. So it's an open-ended, you want to be yeah. part of the design team or something? Yeah, basically. Like Aaron, okay. it would be Got it. nice Thank you. people could talk with them. Great. Thank you very much for that preparation. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come to the podium? to speak about this application. Please. Hello, uh, my name is Kerrigan Barron. I use they, them pronouns. I'm 35 Day Avenue. I'm part of the Abunters uh, to this property proposal. Uh, as everybody just mentioned, we're very thankful for all the changes. Obviously we still have a good bit of worries and very honestly, some of the major concerns we brought forth, like, you know, the amount of open space, were not really addressed. We're also very worried, quite frankly, about the kind of cut through 
I am very personally worried about that cut through. I know that there was concern about if it's going to be a Glenwood address versus Day Avenue address. Very specifically, I worry about a cut through going into such a heavily trafficked 30, uh, heavily trafficked Day Avenue. As everybody knows, it's very much a, a very tight weaving. You have to wait for one side of the traffic to come through before you go. And there's people who just hopscotch all the way up and down that street. And with a major thorough through, which that cut through between those two roads would become, it basically turns into a hopscotch with a third injection. Um, very worried about that safety, very honestly, of that piece of that proposal. And also a little worried about the fire department information here. Um, you know, quite honestly, I'm, I'm right beside all of these units uh, and I really love my home. Uh, I'm very lucky to have it. So I don't wanna see it burn. And I'm a little worried about uh, the fire department being a little bit worried about whether they're gonna come up on Day Avenue or not. That's very much an issue that I think deserves continuation of this discussion. Thank you, board, for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience here at Council Chambers who would like to speak at this time? All right. Carolyn, is there anyone who's given us a written comment? All right, hearing none. Um, I wondered if you would remove your presentation from, thanks. No <clears throat> Thank you, there you go, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to. There you go. Great. Thanks. So we've heard a more information, more items to consider. Um, I don't know how the, the board wants to approach it. We can try to group these into traffic, stormwater, um, open space. Or other suggestions, trees? I can also provide the um, additional sort of information about from DPW and the fire department about um, comments, if that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so D DPW is um, does not have any concerns about the stormwater um, report and it worked um, back and forth with the applicant about that is comfortable with um, the design and certainly would has no recommended conditions except for they want to see an as built of the infiltration system because it is connecting into the city drain. So they want to make sure it's built the way it was designed. And um they um the other condition related to stormwater that they are um asking the board to include um is really just about the um making sure that there's an inspection and maintenance um, plan established mm -hmm. and reviewed by the DPW before recording, before building permits, so that all of those mechanisms are in place um, um, to ensure long-term maintenance um, obligations of that infiltration system. So it will continue to work um, for the long um, term. Um, they do not have any concerns about traffic, um, splitting the traffic. I think we discussed at the last meeting, actually um, having one way uh, is uh, distributes that flow so it's not all coming at, in at one location. Um, the fire department um, 
I think sort of um, would be able, has the capacity to fight fires right from Day Avenue or from Glendale. Um, so they don't actually need to come onto the property. I think it um, would be beneficial for the fire department to be able to drive into Day Avenue, but they're there. So they could do that. They could use that as an option or I'm sorry, drive into the driveway from Day or Glendale, but um, they can also service the area without pulling apparatus onto the property. So thanks, just back to stormwater. So just to clarify, um, even though the engineer, Chris Baker, met with the abutters and went through the same comments that we heard about data that may not be accurate to the nth degree, they feel comfortable um, about the impacts. Um, right, that the flows are being managed and in accordance yeah. to the code. Yeah. Uh, please, John, John Wall and the engineer again. Um, from the time that they met with Chris Baker, I've had conversations while well, I was gone for vacation for a while. Uh, when I got back, I called Doug and uh, we continued our conversations about the retaining the water. And he asked me to split the, he asked me to take care of all the, the items that, that was brought up. And that's all done. And that's, that was emailed to you today. Okay, so that why they have no concerns because we addressed them up. So that was updated based on the new numbers. And yes, and there there seems to be some confusion between open space and stormwater calculations. They are not the same. Open space doesn't count the five foot sidewalk. Stormwater calculations do count them as impervious area. Um, so things like that do give you minor discrepancies between the two. You can't compare the two directly, depending on the rules you're following for whichever calculation you're doing. Can you address just like the general concern that the original, the existing calcs do not account for flows on today Avenue? Yeah, yes. And the tactic you're taking to the, I mean, I know my interpretation of the graphics, but like what, the new can you describe how it works? The new calculations do do that. You can take, um, you can, you're making assumptions the whole time. None of this stuff is, is you can't go out and, and it's all based on probability and assumptions of areas. Um, so we take a CAD system and we measure an area out. If the area seems insignificant, I would put it into the drain, which makes the, the runoff pre-construction higher than so in other words we have we have more to to mitigate um so what we did is split it into a very small piece that now runs off in sheet flow onto day avenue so now instead of having one drainage basin there's two drainage basins to account for so part of it is considering flooding out into uh, day avenue part of the lawn slopes out there and the rest of it goes into the, the basin. And even that is, you know, it, it, as it goes over the lawn, a lot of it infiltrates. The whole lot out there is sand for the most part. Um, so that's, that's the discrepancy in that stuff. That unfortunately, the latest calculations are probably distributed to you today. Thank you. Yeah. Question for the board. So we have a couple of issues around the trees and the shrubs. Um, one that the tree warden is recommending removal of that. I believe it's a maple tree at the end of um, the street. And the abutter is um, concerned about the trees and shrubs that are along the line. Um, I'm not sure if the applicant's able to um, address that tonight about how that impacts the parking spaces, um, if that wasn't considered before, if that tree was missed somehow, that 20-inch maple tree. Or 
Would you like to to speak to that at all, or do you want to hold that for a while? Because the parking spaces are somewhat critical. It, it was surveyed. We believe that the tree that we proposed to take down was on our property. Um, we can ask the surveyor to come back out again. Actually, now that my neighbor has put kind of an inaccurate line up along the side and served me with notice not to cross it, um, I'll have to have the surveyor out again. So we'll have them double check the trees. If there's a tree that in fact isn't entirely ours, then of course we won't take it down. We would never take our neighbor's tree down as we also would never knowingly put a piece of equipment and trespass on a neighbor's property as we were just accused of. Um, not to say that some mistake maybe never has, you know, it's possible that, you know, contractors, subs sometimes think, you know, but like we have been very meticulous. Um, so um, I think that if if there is a tree that is in fact shared between me and the neighbor and is not entirely ours, we will shift the parking spaces a little bit um, so that we don't need to affect it. And we'll maybe what we did this time was we I kind of liked it. We took the trash areas and we we had three of those areas that the pedal people access and we actually separated it into a two and one. So we made it so that one was a little closer to units one and two and then two remained in the back. And I kind of liked it because it did open up that little grass space a little bit for. I don't know, maybe something we'll, you know, we'll we'll see how things kind of look when it all comes together. Um, but like in any case, it opened it up a little bit, which is nice. Um, we might, if we had to shift things around because of a tree, we might then just move those trash bins back to where we originally had them located. I guess that would be probably the simplest solution, but we'd have to kind of look at it. But of course, we're not going to take a neighbor's tree down without their, you know, permission. So I would, you know, I would ask you to approve contingent, you know, that the tree is ours, we get it surveyed. And, um, you know, if a very minor adjustment to the parking spaces needs to be made to avoid the tree, you know, and move the trash back to its original location. I mean, we could keep continuing it. I'm happy to keep coming, but I, I feel like we're kind of starting to get to diminishing returns. You know, I think that we've addressed the stormwater issues that have been brought up. Um, I'm happy to talk to the neighbors more. Um, but I would also like to order the units and I could wait another month, I guess, you know, but like it just, everything's more time. Right. So, you know, it would be nice to get some kind of preliminary approval subject contingent upon final stormwater approval and final fire department, you know, like a, we've done a lot of work. We've wor worked back and forth with people. I have actually talked to the neighbors, at least to the neighbors extensively. So I haven't been entirely avoiding neighbors, um, but I haven't had neighborhood design meetings either. So I've sort of kind of been in the middle, but um, yeah, if I could get a contingent approval, contingent upon some, you know, allowing for some amount of minor changes. I mean, any project has minor changes, you know, like you build something and then like, it looks a little different when you actually build it than as you imagine. You're like, oh, it would actually be kind of cool to do it this way instead of that, you know? And then some of that is done administratively, you know, some of those really minor changes. So, you know, I would ask that we proceed and, you know, and I am happy to meet with the neighbors um, and see what else other minor things could be come up with to uh, make it as good as it possibly can be all around. Um, right. And and I did want to speak to the patios. We're not going to have six six by six patios. That's not how it works. There'll be like a certain minimum dimension, um, and and it works out in the plans. You know, we just don't want to cross accidentally cross the threshold of uh, what the regulation allows. But it works out in the plan as eight by nine patios for the backs. So right. which is was nice. Don't leave yet. Yeah. So uh, another issue was raised about a change in the elevation of the fence along that line. Right. Oh yeah, the the fence. Um. um so right now the neighbor is looking at at least three cars, two or three cars parked in that driveway at all times, you know, and that's historically been the case. You do see your neighbor's car when you live in a city. And so we thought rather than making it kind of like, you know, a fortress where we start, in, you know, a six foot wall at, at the street and run it all the way back 200 feet that we would kind of like take it a little bit off the street, step it up, make it a four feet fence to like define, you know, the edge of the property so that you know, our people aren't 
our residents aren't stepping onto their property. So it's, you know, nicely defined with like a three or four foot fence. I, th I think we put four in the plan, whatever we put. Um, and then it steps up to the full privacy fence. So she will see one and a half cars, you know, but there's that big tree. So there's screening already. Um, so I think that that's kind of a nicer approach than creating sort of fortress infill, you know, where you just like put a giant wall around everything new you build. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I'm proposing we do it now. Step back a little bit, then it starts at four feet, then it goes up to uh, a, a higher fence. The only reason it's at five and a half feet is because the city has a regulation that the maximum height of a privacy fence is six and a half feet, and we had to take the average of the two sides. That's what five and a half is. So it was the six foot fence that we had originally proposed to the neighbor, but we're just trying to follow the city regulation. Um, so that's that's why that number is where it's at. On the, on the parking count, you, there's 11 spots. And what's required again? Can you remind? Ten. Ten. So worst comes to worst, you could just not have a parking spot there. Worst comes to worst, we could eliminate a parking spot, but I really don't want to. But right. yes, it could happen, but I really don't want to. It's nice to have that one extra. Agreed. I'm just, there are multiple ways to solve. Any of the board members concerned about the issue of, uh, the the continuation of the street becoming a cut through onto day, day avenue and creating a traffic nightmare out on day avenue I, i'm not really I, I don't think it will be used as a cut through um i use that area quite a bit and i think people will proceed down bridge road bridge street to uh day avenue and then take a right on day avenue i don't think they'll cut up there and then cut through a very small tight little neighborhood just to save uh, a car length. But I'm willing to hear other opinions. Right. Uh, we we just heard a lot about that at the last Did you? go round. Yeah. And okay. I, they're not going to agree with what you just said. So I know we can just skip that. Well, we, could, okay. <laughs> but, but we, we, we heard a lot about it, right. a lot of conversation. Well, let me say this then. Are there other items that you didn't hear a lot about? Without at the risk of beating a dead horse, new items that you'd like to go through. I did. I've been looking back through my notes on everything that we talked about and everything that we asked. Um, the applicant, you know, um, I think everybody would agree, has gone back and addressed a lot of what was heard here. Um, I'm personally comfortable with what the applicant's done. Um, I think we can easily put a condition on this if if we decide to go forth, saying that uh, you know no trees that are shared with the neighbor are going to be removed, um, or any of the other concerns that were spoken of. Um, but I'm comfortable with what we're hearing from DPW and what the engineer told us. Um, so I don't have any concerns. Thank you. Ah. Um, so there's a chat comment, um, um, Jackie McCreener, um, says that she supports the day Glenwood Sherman neighbors. There are clearly open space drainage fire department and traffic issues. Please share my comments. Thank you. Does the board feel like they have enough information from um, come back again? Sure. I'm sorry to say that I don't have a lot of faith in uh, Danny's comment that she'd be happy to talk with the abutters and neighbors. I have emailed her consistently over about a month and a half, and she stopped responding oh, over a month ago. She does not respond to any emails at this point. I seriously doubt that she would choose to get together with, with us and talk about this. 
So I'm going to keep in place the restrictions, including no trespassing on my property, uh, given that all of the, you know, the construction of the um, driveway is directly on the property line or right next to it. I find it hard to believe that that can be constructed when they can't set foot on my property to do it. So I think you should continue until we can speak with them. Thank you. Um, before we uh, close public comments, I do want to come back to Carolyn's comment, of, excuse me, about um, the open space calculations, no storage, the tree plantings, want to make sure that those things are not in conflict. I mean, even with the changes and leaving off the patios, this remains a very tight site um, with some trees at least coming down. Um, so I do want to make sure that um, the trees that are going back in are going to be planted in such a way that they're likely to thrive and succeed. So they're not going to be loaded up with snow in the winter. Um, so I don't know exactly what to say about that other than I do want to make sure that um, uh, we're kind of maximizing what we can get out of the site, including tree coverage. Could you, can the applicant come up and show us again on the plans, the, the revised sites for those trees? I may need John to remind me of snow storage locations here as we look at this, but I'm going to just see if it's easier to do this. That didn't work. Sorry. So the, the one of the fears is that a plow during the snow operation may <clears throat> damage one of the young trees, I think. Um, hang on. See if I can get this open. So, I mean, if we needed to replace a tree, obviously we would. Yep. Um, so, I need to look at what we we're thinking for plowing. It's big and it's, it's having some trouble reloading, but it is getting there. So at one of our sites, it's a little bit tight. We kind of have a combination of plowing and snow blowing. That is one potential solution. If we find that it's a little bit tight, yeah. you know, we just, our service includes, you know, both. And obviously hand shoveling sometimes is used, particularly at sidewalks and that kind of thing. So that shovels anyway, um, unless tenants are doing that, but that's not typically the case. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen to get the plan again. And then launch the slideshow. Sorry. Um, Take your time. Slideshow. There we go. From the beginning. All right. The plan with the trees. So a, a plow will, you know, come in, um, I guess it'll come in this way, right? And push out, you know, that way and find storage spots. We designed it so that you could kind of plow on the sidewalk and, you know, a couple feet around the sidewalk to get some snow back here. There's a lot of storage back here. Um, so that would get the sidewalk and get to the storage areas there. Um, there's storage there not necessary, but there's extra there if we pull off this movable panel. Um, there's some snow storage here between the two A's. So basically we're just kind of pocketing it around the site, which is sort of what we do everywhere in the city. We put our snow wherever we can, we can figure out where to put it. Um, that's sort of the plan. 
do you want to talk more about snow storage, John? Have I? Have we have... Where's the snow from Glenwood Avenue? Um, so, you know, we actually, for those of you who were around for the Hampton project, there was a lot of talk about snow. <laughs> the, the snow from the whole neighborhood was being plowed onto the private property that became mine at the end of Hampton Avenue. And there was a similar, you know, lot of concern. And the city just found other places to put it. So, you know, you can't store it on private property. And maybe you can if the private property isn't being watched particularly carefully. But then once it gets the situation changes, then the city just starts doing something else. And like they found other little places yeah. on the side of the road to put stuff. And it's been kind of a non issue. And it's actually a lot better because now there's like, you know, we fixed the drainage. There's not like a big pool at the bottom of Hampton. And like there's a lot of things that have been fixed, you know. So I think change is scary, you know, and it may be scary that the snow is there now and is gonna, there's going to have to be a new plan for it. Although there may still be some storage at the end there, actually. But now if we put trees there, two trees and we move the trees, so we've eliminated, you know, at least some of that, you know, and I think the city plows are going to, I think they're going to figure it out, you know, as they did, as they do. And as we all do when we have to remove snow in a city. Thank you. We could go through a few conditions, the ones that we we're proposing, just in case something comes up, we need to check in with the team. <clears throat> we know that DPW has provided us with three bulleted conditions um, having to do a, a revised final construction plan signed and sealed by register PE. Uh, property owners must inspect and maintain the proposed stormwater management system as approved by the Northampton DPW and recorded in the registry of deeds. And I'm, I assume the applicant has this language already in front of them. And prior to issuance, issuance of a final certificate of occupancy, as built plans documenting the as built details of the stormwater management system, signed and sealed by registered PE, um, be submitted to the DPW for review and approval. So those get wrapped up into any decision that we make, uh, if it's an affirmative decision. Yeah. And then uh, we have the other recommended ones by staff. If I can find them. Which has to do, one of them has to do about a, a, a payment into a traffic mitigation fee for the seven additional units of $7,000. That would be a condition. Uh, the fence, if this is still the second bullet, the fence detail doesn't include the fence material at this point. And the applicant should confirm that. So that wouldn't be a condition if in fact we knew it now or And we I did include it, but it's a wood fence. Okay. <clears throat> and there's a question too about light specs that they meet the uh, 2700 K maximum output for our new city light ordinances. <laughs> there's no general site lighting um, other than um, the one that's at the entrance to the basement, uh, to the shared basement. And um, yeah. all of the lights have full cutoffs for every unit and are operated at the front, back, you know, at the doors with a switch. And the one, the only sight light that applies to everybody will also be a full cutoff. Um, yeah, I, I believe right. that, yeah, we can meet the, the right the exterior lighting would have to still meet the um, maximum Kelvin temperature. So 2700. 2700. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, yeah. That can be shown at a CO. Okay. Yeah. We should keep that in. Or I think so. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, tree protection in accordance with the Arborist recommendation shall be installed. 
and that, that has to be submitted to OPS2. Um, the applicant shall comply with all stormwater connections permitting under DPW jurisdiction. And the third one, uh, revised construction plans. I think we already talked about that with the DPW. Is there one other that we were just... All about the parking um, space? Conditional about, okay, conditional upon the finding of the, the, the surveying and the tree on the property line. Um, I mean, you could add that to, so the condition about submitting revised final construction plans 15 days prior to issuance of building permits could include um, final determination about the tree and whether the parking space will be eliminated or shifted. And you could add it to that condition. Sounds reasonable. <clears throat> Uh, I guess I'd like to ask the applicant um, just to get back to the issue of fencing quickly that the direct abutter brought up. I, I hear your explanation of why you proposed the fencing in the way that you did. I guess since the direct abutter is asking for more screening and a different kind of screening, I think that's part of the intention of that part of the requirement. Would you be willing to consider a different arrangement, either taller fencing and or moving the fence to the side of the, um, I'm sorry, my words are escaping me. Retaining wall, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, I would be happy to put in taller fencing if required, but I don't think it would make the development better. If you would like, you, we could put in six foot or, you know, subject to some alternate agreement between me and the neighbor that the neighbor that we both are mutually agreeable to us. Um, maybe that's, you know, kind of the best way forward. And then that if I think that there's something better than six feet that she also might like better than that, then, you know, if she agrees to it and I agree to it, we could, we could do that, you know, for that. I mean, we're talking about one little stretch, you know, of, of 30, the first 35 feet, I think. So maybe, yeah, if, if you want to change it back to the, the full privacy fence, I guess, you know, that's fine. I just thought it would be better to kind of step mm -hmm. in be nicer for the neighborhood, you know, but whatever is required. I don't know how other board members feel about that, but I guess my sense is that if that's what the butter is requesting and the applicant's willing to do it. Um, Bring a six foot fence all the way to the sidewalk where there's driveways, whether it's a driveway for this development or the existing driveway, it just seems unfriendly and dangerous to pedestrians. So it's like a car could be pulling out. You don't see it. I don't know. It's just... Can't be taller than three feet within five feet, but um, right. five feet back, it can start going up to six and a half feet. Right. That's still, that's the minimum. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I tend to agree with what the applicant said of like people see their neighbor's cars right. in a city. And I, I don't see it to be a big deal at all. There's some really cool cars in this neighborhood as we talked about last time. Uh um Yeah, it's addressing that the city has that on the books about a six foot fence. If in fact, you know, there are a lot of rationales for not to do it, but I would say too, if it's on, if, if, if that is a requirement um, or an allowance for a six foot fence and the abutters asked for it, I think <clears throat> um, we could ask the applicant to provide that unless some negotiation happens with that abutter to change it. The applicant can always come back with an amendment, right? Later on, change things. Yeah. Can we the condition based on a negotiation with the butter. I mean, what you could, um, yeah, I mean, you'd want to see that there is, you know, both parties agree to that. So either you think the six foot fence 
you know, creates a good neighbor <laughs> or you think that, um, and that it's necessary, it makes it hard if you make it subject to negotiation. Yeah. Because is it now at five and a half feet or four and a half feet? Uh, so it four and a half, graduates so. up, except yeah. that the, the issue is that height is measured to the average finished grade. So the panel itself will not likely be six and a half feet. The total height will be six and a half feet as measured, you know, on both sides mm -hmm. of the fence. There are certainly bigger issues with this development than uh, uh, 18 inches of fence line for sure. But uh, um, if it's about moving this project forward, then I think we should kind of write that in as a condition and allow the fence to go forward as a, at, at six feet as a, a butter request. We haven't closed the public hearing, so you're within the right to come on up to the podium. I just have a quick question. So I live at 21 Glenwood, so I would be actually wherever that arrow is sitting currently on the screen. Uh, oh, sorry, Adam Byrne, the 21 Glenwood Avenue. Um, I don't see any fencing on our side. Would that be something that I would have to provide? Or is that something they provide? Because currently there's just a wall of fencing on one side, but there's nothing. There's fencing shown on the plans. Okay, so what height are we? I just didn't hear it mentioned, and I couldn't see it from that from back there and, and i actually can't see it from here yeah, not seeing any i see trees on this particular yeah one. and just to clarify the um, projects are not required to put fences around you know completely surround properties separating resident one residence from another resident um the screening requirement is for parking to screen parking so the applicant could provide fencing or other landscaping or as a means to reduce um setback um in the rear setbacks but this but is a side there setback. is a six foot so. fence shown from that but there's a x with a square in it mm -hmm. that's a bike rack so from that point all the way to the back property where the diagonal line is all the way to the back See that? Road, it's a six foot fence shown on the plans okay and that'd be provided by them correct make sure that yeah okay it's a bike rack. okay this is apparently there's some easement been discussed. Okay. With you guys. Okay. So, Thank you. So. Uh, yes, yeah, so it hasn't gone any further. It okay. Moves apparently. That's on the drawings. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I think we've answered just about all of our questions, issues. Uh, we might consider uh, posing the public hearing, at which time we can approach the applicant or their team with any questions. I'll move that we close public hearing. Public comment. Public comment. Thank you. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any more discussion? All right. All in favor of closing the public comment? Was that a five? David, I think you were there too. Yep. Okay. Can only remind me of what we need tonight for uh, a vote for an approval. It's, it's site, a site plan. plan um, <laughs> site plan for um, additional detached units on the property and second curb cut. So it's uh, four? Yes. All right, other issues that you over conditions to reframe, reframe or remind ourselves. Comment about the project. I just want to reiterate something that David said last time, which is to really thank the neighbors and abutters for bringing sub such substantive code-based comments forward. And I recognize that if the project is approved, it still has some elements that you may not be in favor of, but I hope that you feel satisfied that 
your comments really did help move this project forward into a better direction. And we as the board really appreciate you giving us actionable uh, information. So thank you. So, Carol, do you feel comfortable with the conditions that we've? Yes. Do you want me to run through them? Would you please? Yes. Sure. So um, the applicant shall submit shall submit revised construction plan signed and sealed by Massachusetts Registered PE to the Department of Public Works for review and approval at least 15 days prior to the issuance of any city building or construction permits. These should include final delineation of the subject tree along the driveway um, and um, any modifications to that parking space um, shall be noted in these final plans. The fence um, along the property, um, at, in addition, the fence along the driveway line um, with the north northerly abutter shall be six feet uh, within, except within five feet of the front lot line. Uh, the property owner must inspect and maintain the proposed stormwater management system to ensure that the system functions according to the design and in good working condition. Um, and the agreement um, that includes the long-term operation and maintenance plan um, as approved by the DPW must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds prior to issuance of a building permit and prior to issuance of a um, storm drain connection permit. Um, tree protection shall be installed in accordance with the arborist recommendations and shall be certified as such um, prior to submission of a building permit um, and submitted to the planning office. Prior to a certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall submit uh, lighting as built, indicating that exterior lights meet the standard for full cutoff in 2700K or warmer um, and no offsite glare. The applicant shall make a payment into the tree replacement fund based on the ordinance for any replacement trees that are not planted on site. The applicant shall make a one-time payment in lieu of traffic mitigation, $7,000 to the city of Northampton to address incremental impacts of traffic for the seven additional units proposed. The applicant shall submit a stamped surveyed plan showing that as constructed, the site meets the minimum 40% open space. Um, and prior to issuance of CO, um, as built, documenting the details of the stormwater management system signed and sealed by PE um, shall be submitted to the DPW for review. Great. The question about the inspection and maintenance plan, that's something they come to an agreement with DPW about what that is, and then they file that? Well, it's in the stormwater. Um, so like how often? Report? Like how often it's inspected and yes, yeah, so that planned. it shows the um, the schedule of maintenance and it's in what was submitted in the documents and then basically then they just have to sign it and record it at the Registry of Deeds so it I doesn't just sit in our files but is on record. I get that it's in the Registry of Deeds, yeah. but okay, but the the regularity of maintenance and all right. that is recorded, okay. right? And, and to be quite honest, I think that's the hard part the monitoring of the maintenance of it as we see more and more of these throughout the city. Right. Um, it's something we've really got to kind of work on. However, they because of the stormwater um, utility, um, if you show that you're maintaining your system, if you have a system like this and it's being maintained, you uh, may be eligible for stormwater credits. So that's a sort of built-in exactly. incentive to keep up with the maintenance. So is there a motion to be made? I'm glad we didn't have to add those all those conditions to the motion, but there they are. Okay, I'll uh, uh, move that we approve the site plan review for um, 39 Day Avenue uh, with all of the conditions that Carolyn previously read. Motion's been made by Melissa. Second by Stacy Decke. Any discussion? None. Okay. All those in favor? 
Okay, the four, and and I will abstain because I missed the the first um, hearing here. So four in favor. Um, so the mo the applicant application is approved. Thank you very much. Um, look forward to the work. And again, as uh, Janice said, thank you to the neighbors very much. It's uh, I'll I'll just say that it's, it is a tough time in Northampton. We're uh, experiencing a real need for housing and neighborhoods are gonna change because of that. We have to evolve with that. Um, thanks for all of your work tonight and the previous hearing. And off we go to our next hearing. Two minutes. I left my water bottle upstairs. Yeah. Oh, Sam, huh? Folks, we'll need to ask you to bring your conversation outside, okay? Uh, right. Danny, I look forward to the uh, actual fit or fit conversation with you. I do have some things to talk about, starting with your events. <laughs> she has my uh, my contact. Okay. I I mean, I'm always there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The defense was to put your property and my property in serious work. You're here right on time for your hearing, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, just made it. Just made it. You folks don't have enough to be here. I know. <laughs> I think we have just the right amount. <laughs> just, just have to wait for one member to return, and then we'll open up the hearing. Okay. So if somebody's actually in there, or it's just locked. But oh, uh, I, uh, Do you mind if I put this in? I'm not. Yeah, go ahead. It's see the attachment there. Yeah. And then you can do a screen share. Okay. Why don't you pull up the file? And just let me know if you need guidance. Um, yeah, I don't know how to do the screen share. <laughs> Sorry. You know how to do a lot of other <laughs> Okay, so did you pull up here? Yeah. Um, so I just, it's a video. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Zoom, go to here, and do share, and then you just go to that. Perfect. And hit share. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any key? Has anybody ever just handed a. What's that? Do you, like, what did she hand her? Did, no, no. In no trespassing? Oh, like, yeah. Meeting? Has that happened? There are some members during one of the other members. Now you gotta take care of it. That is. Okay, we all ready? 
the chair of the vice president. Okay. Uh, Northampton Planning Board would like to open up a public hearing on April 25th for site plan. A public hearing for a site plan review to add a second dwelling by Zinnia Stetson at 963 Ryan Road, Florence map ID 35-049, record LU-24-8. And is there a presentation by the applicant? Yes. Um, I'm Zinnia Stetson, owner and designer of Haydenville Woodworking and Design, and this is my project manager, Mike Welch. He's, we're looking for approval to add an accessory dwelling unit to the house at 963 Ryan Road in Florence, so the homeowner's parents may age in place with her. The existing house is a 1,044 square foot, three bedroom, one bath, single family ranch built in 1958 with a detached garage. We propose to keep the existing building's height at approximately 17 feet high and keep the existing seven parking spaces intact without any new spaces. We are not aware of any special permits, variances, or findings that have been previously issued for this site. I've drawn the existing house with detached garage as well as the proposed addition with an attached garage. The ADU will will have white vinyl clapboard siding and trim to match the siding on the existing house as closely as possible. The roofing will be gray architectural asphalt shingles existing house as closely as possible. All the new exterior porch lights are under a roof or eave. Mm -hmm. We plan to use dark sky rated LED light fixtures for all the exterior lights. All the debris will be removed from the site and disposed of properly. Construction debris will be loaded in a roll-off dumpster and excavation debris will be, be disposed by our excavator. There is no existing signage nor any plans to install new signage. We do not anticipate any changes in traffic or traffic safety during or after construction. Since we are pushing the garage further back into the property, we plan to add a driveway extension to allow cars to easily drive into the garage. This driveway extension will be concrete and include a walkway to to the shared entrance to minimize transitions for anyone who may need to use a wheelchair or other walking aid. The proposed addition also includes a shared covered entrance with shared mudroom and laundry, an accessory dwelling unit with two bedrooms, one full bath, a kitchenette, a screen porch, a patio, and a new home office for the main house for the homeowner. The existing garage is currently inside the left side setback area. We plan to demolish that structure and bring the new garage and left wall of the ADU inside the 15 foot left side setback requirement. We also set the face of the garage back 10 feet from the face of the main house to conform with the 10 foot garage face setback requirement. We're also conforming to the 50 foot house massing requirement by keeping the left side wall of the garage and ADU at 50 feet long. There are some plantings currently located in that area that we plan to excavate. We plan to reuse all of them in new locations around the property. None of these plants are trees. The impacted shrubbery are two lilac bushes, one rose of Sharon bush, five daylilies, one cherry laurel bush, and one sweet pepper bush. The existing open space of the 0.44 acre property is 84%. The property is primarily in the water supply protection zone with a small portion in the suburban residential zone. There are no brooks, bodies of water, or wetlands on the property. All the construction is planned to be completed in the water supply protection zone only. Since this lot was established in 1955, the 60% open space requirement applies. The proposed open space, including the ADU, garage, porch, patio, and driveway extension combined, is 81% of the 0.44 acres. The ADU will use the same electricity that runs from the main house. The ADU's heating system will run exclusively on electricity, either from the three mini splits or electric radiant heat in the floors. Additionally, we plan to install an electric car charger inside the garage. The new condenser for the mini splits will be installed at the rear of the ADU to keep the, it out of the line of sight from neighbors and from the street. There is currently a condenser for a mini split inside the proposed excavation area. This condenser will be moved to the right side of the house behind the chimney at the right side property line to keep it out of the line of sight for neighbors and from the street. 
The ideal location for solar panels is the front roof of the main house and the adjacent roof above the new shared entry and home office. The remainder of the new roofing will be constructed to accept solar panel, but is likely not the best angle for solar. We are proposing to add a drainage swale to divert stormwater that would have previously run towards the rear of the house to the right side of the house towards the storm drain in the street adjacent to the right side property line. We appreciate the time you've taken to consider our proposal and look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you. Could you um, repeat those open space figures for me one more time, if you can find them? Um, we The current open space is 84%, and we're reducing it to 81%. Um, and because it was a 1955, the 60% uh, requirement. Great. Thank you. Questions from board members? You mentioned that the drainage now is going to be seed flow or run into the storm drain in the street. So we're going to, right now, the, what the, see if I can pull this back up. Um, right now, the water drains. Um, so right now, the water drains from the, uh, the back of the house um, and kind of just all comes forward into the street. Yeah. And so because we're closing off in the garage and the, the house, um, we're going to create a swale to to keep any water from backing up against the back of the house and pointing it towards the the storm drain that is right at the end of the, the street there. Good. Can we do that? What's the stipulation about water not leaving someone's yard and entering city uh, drainage? So um, typically you can't have more um off-site flow than existing conditions. Um, so DPW did look at this. I don't know if they looked at the roof lines, um, but um, they didn't have any comments on this application. They were okay. concerned um, about that. But the whole, I mean, the roof line for the addition will be pitched differently, right? Mm -hmm. The cross gable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we, we are just talking about the front, um, struck the state house anyway. Good. So I think that should be okay. Everybody tapped out for that last year. Is that it? Um I wish I had some comments. Yeah, yeah, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah I, I don't have any comments or questions. I reviewed it all ahead of time and yep. Your timing was, it's it's a nice presentation. I think it's a nice project. I don't think you should show my parents this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's about like four hundred and fifty uh, ranches in <laughs> North Hampton that you could do this to. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, especially moving the garage. Uh, it's a, and... it's a nice. I like it. It's yep. a very nice project. Nope. Yeah. I do have a. Uh, comment passed to me from Council LeBarge. Um, she wanted to make sure that I indicated that she's very supportive of this project, 100%. She um, couldn't be here tonight, but she wanted to pass that along. Good. Oh, all right. <laughs> so before we forget, we've got to ask for public comment. Is there anyone here in City Council Chambers that would look, like to speak to this application for or against? Hearing none, is there anyone on our Zoom participants who would like to make a comment about this application? I don't see any chats. Okay. I move to close the public comment. Second. All right. Motions by made by Jenna White, seconded by David Whitehill. Any discussion? All those in favor of closing the public comment? Unanimous. Is there a motion? From the good address again. 963. 963. Um, 
I move to approve the site plan to add an attached second unit at 963 Ryan Road with no conditions. Second. All right, motion has been made by Jana White, seconded by Melissa. Uh, any discussion? All right, all those in favor? All right, none, in, none opposed, it's unanimous. Thank you folks for coming. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Hayden's Woodwork has been around for a long time. Right, Hayden? Yeah. 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 Um, and I bought it. Very good name. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Okay, can everybody make it to one more? <laughs> At this point, Please. we'd like to open up a public hearing for the planning board in Northampton, scheduled for 750 for a site plan review to enlarge a rear office by Henry Alden at 60 Maple Street, Florent, Map ID 23A. I guess Map so. ID 23A 038, record LU 24 6. Hi, um, my name is Joy Brooks. I'm uh, uh, president of Jones Woodset Architects. Um, we're an architecture firm in Greenfield, Massachusetts, formerly known as Margot Jones Architects. Uh, we were in Greenfield since 1984. Um, we've grown out of our um, third story walk up uh, and we're now 16 architects and we've been looking for a couple of years for a place to move in Northampton and Florence area. Um, so we found a site, uh, 60 Maple Street um, in downtown Florence, which is walkable and has bagels and um, and is pretty close to my house, which I'm excited about. Um, bagels. It has bagels. There's no bagels in Greenfield. It's in the ordinance. <laughs> um, so we're excited to have purchased this property. It's uh, on Maple Street. Um, and I will say it's Jones Whitsett has not purchased a property, but my business partner, Christian Whitsett, and I have formed an LLC. So it's WNB Development is the, the actual applicant. Uh, Jones Whitsett is, is submitted. Um, so this is on Maple Street, um, south of uh, Maple and Main intersection, um, very close to the fire station in, uh, Green, in uh, Florence. Uh, it's a quarter acre lot. Um, it is right adjacent to Tobin Manor Complex. And uh, if you know Pivot Media on the other side of the lot, and it includes both this existing structure and a very large paved parking area, which was also a very nice feature. <laughs> um, it's existing business use. Um, it's currently 65% impervious area. Um, it has eight um, legally striped parking spots and six spots that are striped, but are actually in an, uh, a, a non-parking uh, right-of-way area, uh, an easement that that is prohibiting them actually being used. That was not we were not aware of until we did the uh, investigation prior to purchasing the property. Um, so, in in a, a photographic view, that's Pivot Media on the right. This is the building uh, that we purchased on the left and that large parking area. And at the uh, curb cut is where the easement is located. Um, our plans are to um, take this 1854 building. Um, the first part of the building is the historic part of the building, in my view, historic. Um, the addition at the back is uh, not original to the building. I don't know when it was built. Um, and it has a lot of dysfunctional qualities to it. <laughs> um, bad flooring, um, uh, uh, bad, um, crawl space, um, low ceiling heights uh, at the second floor that are, you know, not acceptable um, and wouldn't work for us. Um, so our intent is to demolish the additional part at the back, preserve the front, um, improve the front with um, significant energy upgrades, um, uh, remove the boiler, remove the oil tank, uh, and then make an addition. So the existing site is here. The easement is this pink area. Um, the existing building footprint is 1,600 plus square feet. 
Um, the addition that we would remove is to the back. Um, and then the addition we would be adding on would take that location and create an L-shaped building, essentially from that addition location across to the right with a full basement and a two-story addition with a one-story section of that addition. Uh, and we've kind of oriented it this way in order to really um, honor the historic building by setting the, the new construction back away, a base from the street. Um, the site has a really nice planting area between the existing uh, building and the street front. Um, so we actually intend to improve it and significantly a lot of it's dead and <laughs> overgrown and in bad shape. So we're keeping the, the healthy elements of it. Um, and our intent is to put uh, a new grading plan in place um, to improve the accessibility to the building um, and then uh, move the parking from where it's currently located essentially over to the right. So maintaining a sort of same orientation. So you would still drive in the, the curb cut. So there's no new curb cut and still have access to park. Um, and we would uh, would still get um, eight spaces, including um, uh, two at an EV station. And uh, one of those would be a handicap accessible space. Um, and the uh, design of the building is meant to to be different, but complementary of the existing. So a modern take um, with a, a shed roof um, that will be sloping um, from the um, east to the west. Um, again, the uh, Tobin housing project is behind the building, it kind of wraps around it on two sides. Um, there's a um, storm structure there. The parking lot kind of slopes. I should go back and show you that. So the parking lot currently sheds water both back and forward. Um, we're not planning on replacing the parking lot. We're just gonna cut it at this point, but in the future, we'd probably end up having to repave it. Um, we don't need to at the moment. Um, so we've been, even though we're actually reducing the uh, amount of impervious surface, we are planning on putting uh, a, a, an infiltration structure behind the building where our, we're sloping most of the water to pick up what we have coming down off of that shed roof. Um, just to really slow its uh, infiltration. Um, and then we also have a little bit of an infiltration drywall at the front, just to, again, be sure that we don't get any water buildup in that area that's sort of a little bit between. Um, but none of that's actually necessary because the soils are really good here. <laughs> um, and uh, and they do take water well. There isn't any record of flooding that I know of. I haven't found any yet. Um, and again, we're reducing our, our impervious surface. I'm a little paranoid about the last conversation, so probably sure. more detail I should. <laughs> um, so again, these are the elevations um, and our, we're excited to have a, an entry um, um, and a first floor level for change, a conference room and things like that so that we can actually have visitors. Um, uh, and we tried to keep the um, the building mass, you know, uh, at, at roughly the same height as the existing building. Um, and that's the general take on it. This is a, a kind of a very preliminary massing to give you a general idea. We have in, we're working with um, a bound uh, on the landscape. They did the 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 project in front of um, the Hungry Ghost Bakery. You know all the herbs and everything building up. So it's kind of intended to be that kind of a sculptural um, reorganization of the site um, and then sort of a nice uh, buffer to the parking area uh, and a different access point in. So that's the general take on it. And that would be generally the front view that we're still working on any details <laughs> when we have time. Are you so you're peeling off the uh, existing ramp from the front, and then just making a graded yeah, um, sloping tree sure. for the accessible ramp yeah, to create an accessible approach that way instead, so that because ramps are um, generally unsightly maintenance nuisances. Sure, and between the two buildings back there, it's a it's a two story long light uh, clerestory a window of some sort. Um, that's actually going to end up, we're going to break that. That's a storefront system between that's going to go, because if I, I'm sorry, I should show you the plans, but I didn't think they mattered too much to you. But if you can see here, um, at, what we intend to do is have a, a two height, uh, two story high opening um, at a stairwell in that area. So that window is essentially stretching. We've now decided to break it into two windows for cost reasons, <laughs> but it's allowing, it's opening up to get light directly into both floors of our office. It's an open plan office. 
it would be a, an unusual feature in yeah. downtown North in Florence for sure. Mm -hmm. um, probably a more modern feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have sort like of um, uh, pendant uh, fixtures in that window too, yeah. so you see it, so it would glow a little bit. I'm sorry, my brain's moving a little bit slowly at this point. So the curb cuts all the way to the right of the site, and people are coming in through that easement to park on the left. That's yes. the flow. Yeah, that's currently how it already operates. Okay. So we're just we're shifting it from essentially where that one story building is. Um, that's where the parking currently is aligned, and we're just shifting it over slightly. That easement, um, Pivot Media has at their actual own road on the other side of the building and to the back. So I don't know why there's an easement really, because they they have a route. But I thought perhaps that easement had something to do with fire department needing to be able to protect um, the the housing. So we've been housed. Yeah, that would be my guess. So I'm not 100 percent sure on 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 how that was established. Nobody seems to know, but it essentially would allow you to loop around Pivot Media. Um, but he doesn't use that, um, and it's been used as parking until we discovered that it wasn't supposed to be parking. <laughs> Um, you talked a little bit about your stormwater and infil infiltration mm -hmm. structures. They're just rain gardens and swales. They're not underground. No, one is underground. The one to the rear, even though there's a, you know, we, we intend to put that one there just to kind of slow the water down in that section, um, because I don't want to overwhelm the structure that is already getting a lot of water from the housing in that area. So that's the direction we were thinking that we would put it, because we're trying to shed most of our water that direction as opposed to towards the street. Can we ask you questions? Yes, you can ask me. Have you looked at those? Yes, they have no comments. Yeah. And the you, uh, some of you may remember when the Seven Sisters um, yep. Midwifery Clinic um, went in. They have an infiltration system too. I mean, it's basically a beach underground. Um, it's all sand. So. Okay, and there was a little concern with that building because there wasn't a front entrance on the street. So this one now will have two entrances, basically, correct? So on average, it works out. They have. We're, they can pay us for that one. <laughs> it bothers me that they don't have a front entrance, I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I can see why. <laughs> the existing entrance will be your entrance. This is just a kind of convenience side door. Kind of exactly. Well, we're actually going to be renting spaces in the front of the, or have the opportunity to rent spaces in that area. I don't know if we will ultimately, but we wanted to maintain that. So we want to maintain the historic entrance um, and allow that to also work as well. I think part of the application is asking the planning board to uh, approve a 20% parking reduction because there's enough ample parking on the street. There is ample other parking places. on the street. And also because um, most of our, some of our employees live in town and part of why we're moving here is closer to public transit. So, um, and we offer a flexible workspace. So most of our employees work from home two days a week anyway. So the odds of us all needing parking at any moment are very slim. Uh, <laughs> um, so we don't foresee ourselves needing more than eight spots, uh, including a tenant or a client use. Yeah. Um, so we don't see any concerns with it. Um, and really, it's ultimately just the site itself is is kind of constrained. And we were happy to be removing as much blacktop as there was yeah. at the site. And eight parking spots, they're not new parking spots, so it doesn't kick into any kind of EV, electric vehicle charging condition. Uh, We're putting an EV anyway. Are you? Thank you. We have multiple people using EVs, so we want it. Bicycle rack, by any yep. chance? Or Bicycle rack is to the front area here. And what's upstairs? It's more yeah. office space? Uh, yeah, so the the front building existing is a four over four essentially, and um, and we're taking over um, two of those elements and connecting to our part. So it's just our whole office is essentially open. The connector between the two is a new bathroom core mm -hmm. um, between the, the proposed and the existing, um, and the the corridor walks all the way through, and just connects. So it's like a big C shape. There's no accessibility requirement to get to the second floor. No. Because they're, you know, the size of it. Yeah, private office, individual offices. Yeah. 
replicable downstairs or upstairs. Yeah, yeah. The accessibility requirement is to get into the building. Just right. Yeah. So. And it's also 7,499 square feet so that there's no sprinklers. <laughs> it's really hard. To yeah. It's weird that happened that way. <laughs> yeah. A lot of buildings that size in Massachusetts. Oh. <laughs> um, any proposed uh, unusual lighting? Uh, Stereo of the building. Uh, the, no, very boring lighting generally. We're we're putting um, uh, path lighting on the new landscape area. Um, there are two um, uh, recessed cans in the porch of the new building. There's already a, a, a surface mounted under the canopy light. The only two that might be of any concern are that we need to have wall packs that we have, and they're 2,700 uh uh, Kelvin, and they're on the side of the new addition right here where you see one story. So we're basically to, to light the parking area. Mm -hmm. So at 13 feet, we have two wall packs. Um, um, so those will be like basically being sure that we, they're you know dark sky compliant 2700, just to be sure that we're lighting and making sure that it's safe for our employees to get to their cars at night. Um, so those are the only two that would even register, I think. Um, you know, as, as something to look at. So we do have a photometric plan that we'll, we can provide. We haven't gotten it yet from Reflex, but we're aware of the guidelines. So we're <laughs> and sure we we're all still getting kind of accustomed to our new lighting ordinances in town. One of the stipulations was that in a building like this, exterior lights would go off, or is that only commercial properties? This isn't a, after a certain time. Yeah, this is commercial. So the lights would go off. Do the ordinances say an hour after close of business, an so. hour after your last employee leaves? How does that, or that they are motion activated? I'm sorry that we're still working through this, yeah. um, but we don't want those wall packs on, right? Of course, you know, yeah, yeah. through the night. We would typically have a motion activated, but um, I'm not sure what the. I didn't realize there was a, a time off. Point. No, that's what we allowed motion. I think, I think also. that was allowed. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. That's fine. Okay. Time okay. Off. Yeah, because I, together. you know, we want them to be working 24 yeah. hours a day. So you never know when they'll come up. Good. So I'm just realizing now we have a new system for our files and stuff that uh -huh. we're looking at. I'm realizing now there's a site plan that's required. And then down below, there's an updated site plan. It, can you just explain what the difference is? What, there's a four oh, yeah. in terms site, of the system submitted. Yeah. Why there was a second one? Yeah, what am I? Because I didn't see uh, the second. Um, one. Uh, there were requests for information about the utility connections and which ones we were okay. keeping and which we were replacing. So the one I have on screen here, in red, are those notes about uh, the service changes. Yeah, and we're you know I'd have to go through and remember what we wrote, but we're keeping the existing um, sewer line, um, adding a new water line. Um, and rerouting the electrical. This is a response to DPW yeah, comment? Yeah, for a request from DPW. And then I think we, they wanted to understand uh, the downspout routing and, and footing drains, or at least we added that. Are you going to have any shocking sculptures in your garden? I hope so. I hope so. There's a, an existing sign that we've kept thinking we want the ability to put a sign in, but I really don't like the sign. Um, so I like to make a sculpture instead. Great. <laughs> Something metal and shock. Are you also going to have a giant flag that just says yes? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. All right. Um, at this point, just for the public record, we'll open it up for any comment. I mean, we don't see anybody here in city council chambers. Is there anyone yes. from that hybrid world that wants to join in? No. Okay. I'm sure it's just because we're so late that they, yeah. <laughs> they're still there. There's still time. Um, I would move we close public comment in that case. I don't think I have any other questions for the applicant that. They see a second. Okay. okay. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Stacey. Oh, Stacy, thank you. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion about closing the public comment? 
None. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Um, Carolyn, did you have a minute to note a uh, few? Uh, well, here we go. Um, just in all transparency, I, uh, normally staff of the planning office, Carolyn, gives us some recommendations and some proposed conditions, but because the applicant has current business with the uh, Office of Planning and Sustainability, I pass. They have to. They had to uh, demur from this one, so it's totally on our shoulders. Um, which I think we can manage it. This is a, a very good project. Um, I think all the information that we need is here. DPW has reviewed their minimal stormwater plans and their utilities. Um, the conditions I heard is that we're, uh, it's not really a condition, but within the motion, we're granting the waiver of a 20% reduction or the request for a 20% reduction in parking. Well, is there anything else? We have our um, kind of standard condition that the applicant shall submit the lighting as built, indicating that the lights installed meet the standards for full cutoff. Yep. 2700K or warmer. No offsite glare. Very good. Thank you. There are no trees on the property, so we don't need to talk about tree protection. I don't know if you've proposed to plant any we have. trees in the in the front of the mm -hmm. yep. But there are no large existing trees. No large I'm existing. Aware. There's a small um Japanese maple we're protecting. Okay. Um and then there's some boilerplate. If you have an underground infiltration system, you'll have to deliver a management plan to the DPW. And that's also recorded in the registry of deeds. Okay, anything else? I think that's it. All right. Is there a motion? Uh, I move to approve the site plan at 60 Maple Street with the conditions specified. So 20% reduction, oh no, as built lighting. As built lighting. And accepting. Accepting the waiver of the request for 20% parking reduction. Okay. Motions and uh, um, stormwater. Just a uh, note, there's no stormwater other than for the DPW, the stormwater management plan has to be submitted to the DPW and recorded. In well, this one, no, because it's not a major, it doesn't fall, it's, an, there, it's not a separate permit, separate stormwater permit. They did not request that. But it's an, infil an underground infiltration system. Right, but it's not connecting to their lines. It's very complicated. It is very complicated. I'm learning after 20 years, let me tell you. Okay, so that is not yes, necessary. Writing in the waiver of the yes. parking, approving Correct. the request for the parking section. Correct. Second. Somewhere in there, there was a... All right. Thank you. Motions have been made by Jana White and seconded by David Whitehill. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Good luck with your project. Support downtown Florence. <laughs> that building's going to go up and people are going to both get it. It's three more pizza places. <laughs> <laughs> All with the name Florence in them. Florence, Florence pizza. So, <laughs> Carolyn, did we have some uh, administrative duties? Carolyn, did we? We have two a &Rs and minutes. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. Um, we can read your... You know you've had your camera on this whole time. I've had my camera. Yeah. 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 You know. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Okay, so um, 
Let's look for the ANRs. Okay. Um, I have an idea. Hmm. So um, we're going to do a little show and tell at the same time. Hubba, hubba. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So here's the search for public records. Um, I did a search on records, A and R records. So I'll go back. I'll back up one. So you're here. You get to this page. Actually, the link that I sent you says search for search. Yeah. So if you know, I um, you can either do it by location. So you can put in. 60 maple. How do you spell maple? <laughs> and there it is. It pops up to the top. So when you click into that, then here's the record that you want to see that was on for tonight. You click in here and here's all the information. Right here, so this is the detail sheet and hold all on, the attached. Hold on. Why is my screen showing? You know? Are, are you, you're at 200%. Ah, hold on one sec. OG is trying to. Control zero will take you back to regular. Will it? Control zero. It'll always take you back to regular Zoom. No? No, maybe. Okay, so go on, Carolyn. I, I can, there's two tabs. There's uh Details is what you see now. Do you see this? I'm screen sharing. Details, yeah. <laughs> But I can't see up there. That's and I'm trying to follow it here. Okay. okay. Details. Details here, and then files here. These are all the attachments. Right. So. So I'm going to go back to the details now. I'm going to back. So wait, wait. Go back to the files for a second. I just want to say something about because this has always been an issue with like multiple revisions of things. Yeah. It's always very confusing to review and know. Like I'll spend 45 minutes looking at something. I'm like, oh, there was a later version. Like. And um, because now we have, when you click into a file, it tells you the different versions. You can download the latest version. So instead of adding another site plan to the list, yeah, you can just add a site plan version. So yes. that whoever picks it up can actually know that they're getting the latest version. Yes, we can do that. Um, Wait till they site plan version one. Site yeah, plan. right. Like right now, we have this is an old site plan, even though it's a required site plan, and then right. this one's the later one. But really, yeah. It's yep. uploaded so that it's here. That is so true. And we're still working through right. this piece. And Sarah discovered that um, she was doing that with some plant. She was reorganizing them. And so then the latest version does pop up. So that's what we'll do from okay. here on forward. Um, and, you know, um, so you so you will want to look at sort of the latest version. And we are also trying to figure out if we can create folders for like neighborhood letters that, that are instead of having a string of those, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. Okay, so I'm going to back. Hold on one sec. Walk me through those tabs again. So I went to 60 Maple Street. Click here. Okay. And now I'm going to LU46-2. Yeah. And then go to files. Yes. Yeah. And uh, then okay. the point is, so what David's saying is currently, if you click here, it just says version one. And yeah. so this hasn't been implemented yet, but eventually, because there is actually a second site plan here, yeah. eventually they would both be under that same link. So you could see the different versions and they'll be clearly labeled, I guess, so we yeah. know which one to look right. at. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, then I backed out to, so now back to the search record. So you can either do it by location, which is what we did or records type. So I'm going to do records type now because a &Rs are separate. And so only a few will show up. So I'm just going to do, but this is the coding that I put in the agenda where it says record number LU24-16. You can use that record key to type in the record to take you there. If you can't do my open applications or is this closed things too, historic stuff? This will be closed stuff too. Um, so not stuff that's been closed, like the only stuff that is filed in this system. Right. So from March of 2024 forward, everything will be in here, even once you've already decided on, and it'll just show as completed. So anything, if we want to look historic files, like we still have to go to the old system to look at. Yes, and we're they're going to merge eventually. Um, where the software provider is working on integration with the old 
um, system because who knows, this is a software, it's in the cloud. If we switch in five years to a different software, we want all this data. So we want to make sure it's backed up into that, you know, file cabinet, essentially electronic file cabinet. So the idea is, so now there's, there's an address, there's a map ID, and for a particular project, there's a record. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we'll do an a and um, Hmm, which one am I doing? Um, well, we'll start with three because I know we'll have to do that one anyway. So this is 171 King Street. So here it shows the location on the right. Again, you have, these are the, this is a description. And then um, files. So here's the, I'm going to pull up this um, PDF to show you. Um, so now um, this is the parcel on King Street, 5.34 acres. They're, they're, it's comprised of three parcels. Just in one minute, because this yep. is a so and tell. How did you get to that parcel map? You, you, uh, we got the 171 King Street because NG Automotive, and then we're at records or we have details. Yeah, I went to f uh, record and then it was an A&R record. So I typed in A&R and then I picked A&R 3, 24-3. Um, where did you type in A&R? So, um, if you look on the screen share it's, now. It's probably, it's complete to come to us. I can't play with it. Oh, okay. So back out to this screen. Do you see the screen up there? <laughs> Go back here. <laughs> yeah, because there are only three in the system now. So number three. So in the future though, when you type A&R, am I gonna get every A&R ever that's been in the system or just the open stuff? Like the stuff that's up for- You're gonna get everyone in the system, in the... but I'm gonna have the number on there, the record number. So you're gonna know, oh, it's number three. Although we never know what A&Rs, like we never right. review A&Rs before the meeting. Right. Day, so it doesn't really matter for A&Rs. Would they have the address too or no? Yes. Yeah. Um, I just did it. Because they don't need to be agenda. Right. They need to be on the agenda, but they're not a public hearing. So now um, you go to the files. Are you there, George? Because of my health. Right. So then you can download the PDF. And that's what's on the screen. So this one is um, King Street, five acres. Um, it's a, they're merging the lot lines. It'll, it's what's referred to as a perimeter plan. So this is not a subdivision. So they're requesting approval of this as an a &R. So I need a motion to endorse this as not a subdivision. What? Yeah. So what are they, are they trying to there separate three it? Or lots three? They're merging. Oh, okay. and so it's going to be a new lot is the one single lot. One lot. Okay. Okay. I never realized that was three lots there. Yeah. Um, so there's the right, there's the bottom of Pin Street that goes across. Yep. And the, the lot on the right, the far furthest lot on the right is not part of this complex. I, no. Whose is that? So there's Stand big truck. So that's yeah. part of Foster Ferrari. Right. So it's just in the sort of heavier line in the middle. So this would just, I would just need a motion so to approve as a move to endorse the ANR on King Street. Second. Motion's been made by Melissa. And Motion's been made by Melissa and seconded by Jen. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of endorsing the ANR at 171 King Street? Unanimous. Okay. So, and now I'm going to go back, and the second one is um, 
It's right. another A and R. Just a question on the system. This is saying that this guy Thomas Reedy owns this property. He's a no. He's the applicant. I know, and it says the applicant is the owner. Oh, it does. No, he's a land use attorney, so I assume that's no, not. He's the, the representative. Owner. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's I just a yeah. It doesn't really matter for this, but to, yeah, to I'll check that. that. Um, no. so the second one is um on Lindsay Road. Uh, eighty four twenty A and R plan oh four. They're both the same number. Twenty four two. Still on the uh, King Street individual A and R record. We just need to do a new search. Oh, damn. Um. What's the new address? To records first. Linseed Road. And which ANR is it? Two. Two. Or oh, wait, we did one, two, three. Yeah, two. We did three already. Yeah. Twenty-four two. Randy. Mm hmm. So this, they're dividing, they're creating, an, uh, they're dividing the barn off from the house. They, they both meet the minimum lot size requirement. The frontage is, it has to meet the frontage for Hatfield, not Northampton. So they have to go to Hatfield also. Um, but most of the land is in Northampton. So the board approves it for the Northampton portion as not a subdivision. Did we do this one? At the last meeting, this is at the at the end of Linseed Road. I thought we yeah. put this. I think there was a new one. Hold on. Why am I not seeing this one? I never saw this one. I wasn't at the ele uh, April eleventh. He did one with legislative matters. Uh. Awesome. Yeah. There was one on the other lot. It's right next door. Uh, I think that's what you're thinking of. Yeah. So this one is just south of that. So I just need a motion for that one as well. Motion to endorse this A&R. On the motion Lynchseed to Road. Lynchseed Road. Made by David Whitehill to endorse the A&R on Lynchseed Road. What's the number? Just so we don't confuse it with the other one. 242. 242. Seconded by Melissa. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. And then I just said there were three sets of minutes. Three sets of minutes. And are they in this cache too? <laughs> no, huh? Dang. I was just Wait, there's another A and R in here, but that's not we already did that one. That was from last time. Oh, I see. I move that we approve the minutes of March 14th, March 28th, and April eleventh. Fourth. Motion's been made to approve those three minutes by Melissa, seconded by Stacy. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, Do adjourn? Move to close the public hearing? No, adjourn. Adjourn? Oh, right. Motion to adjourn at uh, 9.35. Motion's been made by the chair and seconded by Stacy. All those in favor? Aye. Supporting stop. Hold well on. Excuse me. Back when we can just close our Zoom windows. <laughs>